Uh, moving on with another example of Morningstar. Uh, if you want, you can make the same drill here. Uh, I think I understand <laughs> the, the... The point, okay. Uh, and uh, let's continue then with another, another candlestick formations, the spinning tops. Uh, I decided to uh, present them because they are uh, quite, quite often to spot on the charts. But uh, one important thing before we talk a bit about them is that uh, they can both uh, reverse the market, but also the market can continue in the same direction after a spinning top is uh, formed. So uh, you will need to have uh, to wait actually for a better confirmation that in this case the market is uh, reversing or if it is uh, continuing in the same direction before opening any trades on the market. Uh, the spinning top usually looks like that. Uh, the candle has a very, very small body, either a uh, bearish one or bullish one, uh, or it might not have a body at all. Uh, people call that dodgy, but it's basically the same. Uh, and you have huge tails or shadows on top and the bottom of this body. Uh, usually the spinning top represents uh, a huge fight in the market between the bulls and the bears, and uh, it represents that no one is winning. Both the bears try to push the price down, or the bulls try to push it up, but uh, the, basically if we, for example, have 5 million traders, 2.5 million of them were selling and 2.5 million of them were buying. Uh, so here are a few examples. I decided to take out examples where we see a reverse in the movement and also examples where we uh, see a continuation. So this is, uh, uh, as you can see, we have a reverse here. Uh, we are having, although this uh, is not the perfect uh, downwards movement, we are having a downwards movement here, a spinning top forms, and then a huge a bullish candle appears uh, which is a confirmation that the movement has reversed and it is safe to look for uh, buy opportunities on the market. On the next chart, you can see actually two spinning tops, uh, like a few hours apart, and you can see that they haven't changed anything on the market. You can see uh, the price here was falling, uh, there was a almost an engulfing, which didn't work obviously. The sellers managed to push the price down. But on the next candle, the buyers continue to uh, try and reverse the movement on the market, uh, failed to do so, and the price continued further down. In this case here, again, we had, or actually, we also have an engulfing on this, uh, on this chart. Uh, but also here we had... I, I, uh, see, I see something else, but I, I will not... Uh, you see something else? You see this one? No, no. Maybe I'm the only one who sees it. I don't know. Uh, you can say. <laughs> Thank you. It doesn't matter. <laughs> go. Just go. Uh, so <laughs> you can see the spinning top formed here, meaning that uh, buyers and sellers are equal on the market. But after all, on the next candle, we can see that uh, the bulls have won and the price. Uh, this is a confirmation that most likely the price will continue up. Again, always beware of surprises and don't use uh, candlestick formations as a sole signal to trade on the market because a lot of, time, uh, of the times they might not work uh, due to maybe some external factors or uh, some fundament. So you might get trapped with your position and instead of uh, catching a profitable move, you will end up losing. So just on, on this topic, for the ones who are very, very interested and who are committed to spend a lot of time, because learning trading is, is very long, uh, what I suggest, you, you take a Google spreadsheet and you make maybe five columns. On the left, you make plus plus, and on the far right, you make minus, minus, and of course, plus uh, zero and minus. Then you go on a chart, uh, maybe on a four hour chart, and you have to spot 
all the formation that Ilian just mentioned. So, for example, all the shooting and all the morning star and all the engulfing, whatever actually. And then you're going to give them number. So you take a screenshot and you write one, two, three, and so on and so on. Then you go on this Google spreadsheet and you have to write in the plus plus all the formation that uh, after this formation you have a big movement, so a reverse. So let's say that you have to write when this formation has worked. When you have this formation which didn't work at all, then just put it on the far, far right, okay? So you do this example. In a moment, you're gonna have maybe 10 uh, numbers on the left column, 10 numbers on the right column, and you're gonna have a huge amount of number in the middle. And then what you have to do, and it's very important when you're a trader, you need to work your uh, observation uh, sense. So you have to try to spot everything that all the number on the left column has in common. And it exists, there is a pattern. So if you, if you look at 100 angle frink, there is maybe 20 that works, 20 that doesn't work at all, and you have 60 that barely work. So as a trader, as an analyst, you have to understand what makes, what is the common points between the 10 that, uh, 20 that really works and the 20 that really doesn't work. This is how you have to learn. And, and, and then by doing that, you will see, ah, yeah, it's true that when this happens, or when there is this thing, most of the time the angle frame doesn't work, or oppositely, oh, when there is this thing happening, the angle frame works. So this is super, super, mega important to do this thing, but it's only if you are ready to spend a lot of time. And that's all. Okay, so uh, we can continue. Uh, this is a throwback to our last presentations, uh, the four pillars, which uh, Pascal mentioned in, in his intro so to say, uh, and the idea is that, uh, just with a few words, you have to be four different persons. So you have to be a strategist, you have to be an analyst, you have to be a technician, and you have to be a manager. Now, I inputted that slide uh, just to tell you that today we will focus on the analyst. So what the analyst has to do? He has to qualify the market, he has to uh, take into consideration and in perspective the global overview, and he has to map the chart. Now, these three things qualify the overall context of the market. Is, uh, those three things are actually equal to the three types of analysis uh, that exist and that uh, most traders use. So qualifying the overall context of the market is equal to the behavior or uh, on some place called sentiment analysis. What this analysis is? Uh, basically, this is uh, an analysis where you try to understand how the other participants on the market feel about the market at this point. Now, this is quite hard to be done uh, because there are no gu guidelines and you cannot know uh, what people are thinking, millions of people and participants on the market are thinking and how they fe uh, feel. But uh, by the end of the presentation and understanding better how price action works, you will be able to do that analysis by looking at the chart and uh, seeing where people felt fear or where people felt greed or, uh, for example, where they are expecting for something to happen and uh, how they feel about certain events, uh, economical, political, and so on. So uh, usually the behavior or sentiment analysis is uh, strongly connected to the fundamental analysis, which is defining the global perspective and conditions on the market, uh, actually of the world, and they are represented or visualized on the market. The fundamental analysis uh, includes understanding how the economy works, understanding uh, how politics work, understanding how the central banks work, uh, what are their policies, understanding what reports like, uh, for example, interest rate decisions or, uh, ah, sorry, I forgot it in English, uh, uh, yeah. uh, GDP or uh, gross domestic product, uh, I apologize, I forgot the English uh, name of it. Uh, how that re uh, what that report 
gives us as an information. And uh, since those type of reports uh, are connected to the behavior of or the sentiment of the market. So uh, just a quick example. I won't go into further details about the fundamental analysis as uh, a lot of traders actually use it, mainly use it. But I'm more of a technical analysis guy and uh, regarding the fundamental analysis, I tend to uh, check economic calendars uh, for upcoming reports. Uh, maybe um, do a habit uh, when you wake up each day to uh, give at least one or two hours of uh, reading some news from uh, various uh, world websites. Uh, and basically to know what uh, the current situation is, uh, both economical and political, for the countries which currency you are going to trade uh, during the day or uh, this week or this month or even for the whole year. Because uh, most of the times those fundamentals, uh, if I can call them that, they are the uh, catalyst for the market to move. So based on those fundamentals, all the participants react uh, to them and this is visualized on the market. And the last thing, map the chart, is equal to the technical analysis, which uh, basically is to use different types of uh, tools, uh, which we are going to speak a little bit about uh, in this presentation, and also I think the next one and the fourth one as well, uh, to identify areas or uh, things that other participants on the market see and uh, that, that is also connected to the sentiment and the behavior uh, because finding those uh, spots, uh, let's say spots, uh, you know how or you just at least think how the other participants on the market will react at those areas. So this uh, combining the three analyses uh, even if you are good, very good at only one, so for example, I'm very good at technical analysis, not so good on the other two, but you still have to uh, know a few major things and uh, how to do them, just at least basic things, in order for them to help you uh, perfect your technical analysis, for example, and make the right decision when going uh, to the technician in you, uh, who basically is responsible for uh, opening and opening the trade. And ju just a few comments uh, <coughs> about it. So, again, when people want to sell you something, they tell you, oh no, but if you want to trade, you don't need to know about economic. You just need to read the charts. And it's true, like, if you read that chart, it looks easy. You know, you look at a candlestick, you look at whatever the tools or theory he wants to use, and then you think you are a good trader or a good analyst. Uh, no, you have to know also those two things. But then people might say, well, it means that I need uh, an economic degree to trade. No, actually, if you remember the first lesson we did, when we said don't overcomplicate your trading and 80% of the information is bullshit, it is actually pointless. So Ilian said something very important, it's routine. So me, when I started, I was maybe like you, uh, I was younger, uh, but I, 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 I didn't want to read anything because it's boring. I said I was 19, so don't you think that when you are 19 you want to read uh, uh, political or economic news? No, you don't want. But it's just a small routine. You don't need any study. You just take, uh, as example, Thomson Reuters uh, uh, news or any website, and you just read. Even if they are wrong, you will start to know some words uh, that uh, they used to use. You can also listen to some radio. And in a moment, after a few months of reading and reading, there is just things that you will start to understand. What is a quantitative easing? Uh, why a policy of a, 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 what's the name of this? A central bank is important and what impact it has on the market. So you don't need to learn, you just need to read. And it doesn't cost you anything. The morning, if you go to the toilet, you take your phone and you read, and that's all. And, and it's just a routine. And if you go and if you succeed to have this routine, in three, four months, you can speak with any professional uh, economist, you know, the guy who are paid to tell you what happened in the past or whatever, or what goes to the TV. All those experts, they are not experts. They don't do anything more than you. They just have knowledge. 
That's all. You know, uh, trading is not a science. So you can be right, you can be wrong, whatever. So you just need the knowledge. So read, read, read. Don't too much, just 10, 15 minutes per day. That's way enough. And you're going to see after a few months, you're going to start to have some mechanism and that's all. Yeah, and adding on that is that you will be always up to date uh, of certain changes, especially in politics, because as you probably know, uh, every politician has different views and ideas on how to uh, grow the economy of the country. So uh, when you're up to date with everything by just reading, as Pascal said, you're prepared for what might happen on the market and then you can react accordingly when you uh, do your technical analysis, uh, when you open your trade, when you manage it, etc. And uh, I just want to move on to uh, an example I would like to give you for you to better understand how the three analyses correlate between uh, each other. So, uh, imagine that you own a company and let's call it company A. And uh, the company is doing fine. Uh, you're having some earnings. Uh, so, in 2013, the expected earnings for your company is uh, 100,000 euro. But actually, the company makes 125,000 euro. And uh, you talk about this to a friend who says, hey, I, I really like your company. I like uh, where this is going. I would like to invest in your company. I would like to buy 20% of your company in the form of shares. So you say, okay, uh, I would uh, like some fresh uh, capital in the company. I can use it to expand or whatever. And you agree with him to sell him 20% uh, of the company in the form of shares, each costing uh, 50 euro. Now, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with shares, uh, and also for me, because I'm not that familiar with them, but I know some basic stuff. Uh, when you buy shares of a company on a yearly basis, uh, you receive some percentage of the earnings as dividends. So you get paid for owning uh, shares in the company. Now we move to 2014, when the expected earnings are 150,000 uh, euro, but again, the actual earnings of the company jump up to 220,000 uh, euro. So, uh, still your shares are 50 uh, euro because it's only you and your friend in the company. Uh, you sold shares only to him. But your friend decides to tell his friend about your company. And he says, hey, look at those numbers. We are expecting 150,000 euro but actually the company is doing a lot, lot better. So his friend says, okay, I would like to invest in this company. And what happens after another person comes and invests into the company in 2015, you can see the price of the share, shares goes up. So he's buying the shares at 75 euro instead of 50 euro. As the company continues to grow, during the years, so next year again, expected earnings are higher, uh, actual earnings are higher than the expected number, so does the share price grows. So people uh, start investing in your company, buying shares, and this is pushing the price of the shares uh, further up. But then, as uh, every business, uh, you have a period where uh, this huge momentum uh, exhausts and uh, it is start to slow down. So this also uh, affects the market and the people who are buying your shares. So in 2017, the expected earnings are 315,000 euro, but the actual are less. So the people on the market uh, say to themselves, okay, so I guess this company is uh, starting to have some difficulties in front of them. It's getting hard for them to keep up with the tempo uh, with which they started back in 2013. So maybe it's time for uh, some slower pace, uh, maybe going into um, 
that period when uh, everything is declining a bit before a new possible uh, upward trend, let's say it, uh, comes. So people start selling their shares in order to uh, take what they made as profits from those shares and also the uh, dividends are getting lower. And if this continues, this momentum, so the expected earnings are higher than the actual, the shares will keep dropping because people will keep selling. So in, on this uh, example, you have an example of all three analysis. You have the fundament, so the fundament is this, it's sort of like a report. So as I said, for example, if we have a report for the gross domestic product or interest rate, it affects the market, people take it into consideration. In this case, again, those earnings expected and actual, people take that into consideration and they decide that the company is slowing down, so they start uh, selling their shares. This is the behavior or sentiment analysis. And then all of this is represented on the graph where you can uh, define by using technical analysis, for example, that uh, the shares won't go lower than 50 in the next few years, maybe. Uh, so here maybe uh, some, some comment. It's very uh, important, this chart, because uh, it, it's all about human psychology. So if I tell you, if you invest in, uh, in an apartment or in my company, Let's say to take an easy number, you invest 100,000 euro. And I tell you, every year, you're going to receive 10,000 euro of dividend. So if you invest in an apartment, every year you make 10,000 euro with your rent. So you make calculation and you say, okay, it means that if I'm investing now, in 10 years, I will have my money back because you invest 100, so 10 years multiplied by 10,000. And after 10 years, what we, you, what we call it is that you have your passive incomes because you have your capital back and then easy life. The problem with uh, dividends is that as Ilian has said, they are changing. So it's not every year actually that you're gonna win those 10,000 euro. So at the beginning it was okay because the profit of the company were rising and the company decided to give more dividends. So instead of 10,000 euro per year, they started to pay 15 or 20,000 euro per year. So then you have people who haven't said, oh, if it's 20,000 euro per year now, if I'm investing, uh, me too, 100,000 euro, then in five years, I will have my money back. And so a lot of people wanted to invest in this company because, wow, five years to have my money back, it's great. But what happens when you have a lot of people who wants to buy and when you have only one people who can sell? You're, you know, it's just supply and demand. Price goes up and price goes down. And why it goes, it goes down is because maybe the company has delivered then 50,000 euro per year of dividends. So people started to invest for one reason. If they invest 100,000 euro this year, they know that in two years they have their money back. This is why they have invested in this company. The problem is that the company after drop uh, its dividends back to, let's say, 20,000 euro. It's still great and this is what you have to understand. You still make a lot of money just five years to get your investment back. But it's not what you wanted, it's not what you expected. You have invested because you wanted your investment back in two years. So because of that, you decide to say, it was not my plan, I prefer to move my money to another company or to, to remain liquid. This is what is important. It doesn't go down because the company is not making money. It goes down because investors are not satisfied because they want more, and that's all. And this is the behavior. The fundamental is what Ilian has explained you, the numbers of the company. I mean, the, 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 the numbers of the, you know, how much the company is making. And the charts, uh, you have it here. You have the price, you have the, the dates, you have the curve. You can replace it by a candlestick. Uh, maybe here on the top, maybe if it was, uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, an engulfing. Uh, yeah, bearish engulfing. So, so when you are an analyst, you can say, whoa, so I have an engulfing. Okay, first information. Uh, on, my, on my charts. So it means that, uh, remember what engulfing means. It means on a, a lower time frame, so on the, the, the market is making a reverse. So you know that the market is making a reverse. Then 100 euro, what is it? It's, it's a number which is round. So sometimes people, they are a bit, uh, wow, 100 euro, it's something. Because we are human and you know, we all need uh, marks. 
So 100 euro might be a psychologic thing. Actually, you're going to speak after about the psychologic it's number. You. So you have two uh, signals. Then you have the information that uh, people who bought here, they bought here because they wanted uh, their money back in two years. And you know that with the new numbers of the company, they will not have their number in two years, but maybe in five or six years. So again, another information. So when you have all this information, plus maybe other information that we don't have here, then you can say, you can make an analysis. You don't know what will happen, but you can say, Oof, there is very bad signal here. Uh, there is a wrong number. There is a, a promises that the company didn't uh, hold. Uh, and this kind of thing, so it can give you a strong sentiment that maybe the market might go down. It's not only for uh, uh, stocks, it can also be for uh, uh, currencies. So this chart actually, if you tonight by curiosity, you go and you look at USD Yen, and you open it from 2013 to today. So in 2013 we were here, and there were um, election in, uh, in Japan, uh, and the, the, there were also the right and the left, you know, were fighting. But what was interesting is that the candidate from the left, uh, I mean, not left, but a populist, uh, he, he wanted to force the central bank to do something. I can't tell you why because I will uh, lose you. But to do something to uh, make the yen, Japanese yen, going lower and lower and lower because it's better for the Japan to have a very low Japanese yen. It's better for their, for their importation. So this candidate, uh, as a populist, uh, you know what is a populist? It's when you tell to people what they want to, to hear, to be elected. But he won, uh, of course. And uh, what was interesting is that the election was here, but there, there, are, there were a lot of survey uh, who, so people were asking to the Japanese, okay, who you think will win? And they all say, oh, it's this guy. His name is Abe. I don't know actually how it's pronounced. And because he was leading the survey, uh, speculator, so investor, they anticipated that this guy, if he becomes the prime minister of Japan, he will force the central bank to adopt a new policy. So we know that mechanically the Japanese yen will go down, and so USD will go up, and so USD yen will go up. So in 2013, uh, there, was, there were a big movement because people expected that this guy will be elected. He has been elected here. So no surprise because people expected it, but the market kept going up by hoping that the policy of Abe will work. 2015, 16, I think. Uh, yeah, I think it was 16. 16 yeah, I'm not okay. sure. End of 2016, uh, we are here. The Japanese yen against the dollar is not moving a lot because what we notice is that the policies or the promises of this politician, surprise, didn't work. So the market started to doubt about his policy and say, oh, again, fake promises. And there were an information that arrived, it was in October, which says, fuck, Japan is into recession. So, you know, it's when uh, you, st you, you make uh, less money than you are spending. I mean, your people spend, spend, spend less than, than uh, what you are making. And uh, so there were some questions like, okay, now what we do? Do we keep doing this uh, policy or do we just step back? And finally, uh, they decided to step back and to change a bit their policy. What happened right after we were in February 2017 or 16? 17, no, okay, I'm it doesn't matter, it was in I'm February. Not sure about the year. Uh, okay, when Trump has been elected? Two years ago. Really? Wow. So it was in 2016, February 2016. Finally, uh, we understand that the policy of this guy is just bullshit. So expectation, this is expectation, uh, are way lower than the actual results. So the market start to think that, whoa, whoa, I think we bought too much uh, and we should sell. So there's a huge movement. And this is how you make a strategy. Because when we got this information, what we had? We had, we know that the movement has been based because people uh, expected something. This thing didn't come. So by logic, it, it, mean, it means that maybe the market will do the, the, the exact reverse. 
then you know that uh, Abe is totally is not popular anymore in Japan. So it means that the policy he wanted to do doesn't work. Then, even if after people say, no, it's not a recession, we made a mistake in our numbers, still there is bad indicator in Japan. The country doesn't do very well. So you have all these indicators. So you have fundamental, the country doesn't go well. You have the behavior. People bought because they were thinking, but funny, it doesn't happen, so it has to go back. And then you have the chart. On the chart, you had a big uh, movement who were flat, and in February, you have a big candle who break it. Free information, and what we have said by this time, so okay, so now, guys, we just sell. It's forbidden to buy Japanese, I mean, it's USD Japanese yen, so it's forbidden to sell Japanese yen. You have to buy, 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 until we go back there. So this is what we have done for six months, until the strategy has been totally wiped off, because something unexpected happened, Trump. So when there was the election of Trump, we were here, and me, I was, I was, I was selling, 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 selling. I don't know, you know, we were in, in, uh, in, uh, in Greece, and, and uh, I went out, of, I, I was in Sofia, I was trading on my phone on the airport. Uh, we arrived in Athens, I, uh, I turned on my, uh, my phone, and then I saw a huge movement uh, up on the USDN, that totally destroyed my strategy. And, and that's all. So sometimes, you know, things happen. But what you have to remember is this, how we make this, this strategy. We understand why it went up. We understand why people are disappointed. We look at the charts, you know, signals, 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 and then, okay, I know that the strategy, it's only sell, 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 sell. So this is why this chart is super important and you really have to understand it to process and to understand what trading is and what analysis is. Sorry, just a question. Well, why did the dollar appreciate because people were stupid. They were thinking that uh, Trump, I mean, actually, if, if, if Trump is uh, one of the most stupid person in the world, uh, one of the most uh, disgusting person, but uh, he's also someone who is, uh, uh, how to say, without being... He's uh, very good to investors. Yeah. I, I to huge to companies by cutting the, the taxes and the rates. As example, there is something that he did that, of course, here we don't care because we are not a rich American. But uh, until now, it was very complicated for very, 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 very rich American to put back their money from the Cayman Island and to the Seychelles back to America. He put a law that now it's okay. So Trump is a friend of uh, the rich, the powerful, and the market knows it. So they know that maybe in the long term, Trump will not do a good job for a basic American, but the, the traders wanted that. So it just go up because market were ah. So it will reinforce the dollar. There will be a new war. So if there is a war, the, the dollar is always going up. If, you, if, you, if the dollar is going up, just uh, attack a random uh, oriental country, and then it goes up, and it's how it works. So that's all. And also, he wanted to remove uh, the healthcare. That cost a lot of money that Obama has done, so market for, way. we're gonna save money, so, you know. Yeah, and a lot of money came back to the United States for huge companies, and, you know, if you have $1 million bills, and then you have $5 million bills, obviously, uh, the price of the dollar goes up.